Thank you so much, Midori. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. So as Midori had mentioned, I am Lisa Nishimura, use pronouns they, she, and I'm actually the engagement coordinator here at YI. So I just wanted to welcome you all, and I'll talk a little bit more about my journey. But first... I just want to get a sense of how folks are feeling. So, of course, you don't need to unmute or anything. I don't expect you to. But um, usually what I do in my trainings, I actually ask folks how they're feeling and how they're doing. So we have a, what we call a temperature check. I don't know if folks have done this before, but I always feel it's important to see and get a feel for how folks are feeling in the room. So on a scale of one to five, you can write this in the chat. How are y'all feeling today? And you can feel free to use decimal points. I would just say like I'm a 4.2 today. So I don't know if folks want to put it in the chat and I'll also just look. You know, the five. <laughs> so 3.5 me today. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, so you're like kind of average. That's fine, that's fine. <laughs> Hope we get that up today or you know, it's beautiful outside. I don't know where you are in the city, but yeah, it's so great. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So we got a 3.5. What about other folks in the room? How y'all feeling? And you can feel free to put it in the chat or if you want to unmute, that's completely fine. Up to you. So I'll give folks like a minute if y'all want to put it in the chat. If not, that's fine too. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see a 4.5. Okay. Okay. So someone's feeling good today. Yay. I hope it's because of the weather and you're feeling just good just in general. Hopefully you radiate that to everybody else. <laughs> All right. All right. So I can just keep it moving um, for the sake of time and we can just get going. So getting to know why I or Young Invincibles, which is where I work, so I just wanted to give y'all a brief overview of how our team looks like. So obviously this is me, Lisa Nishimura. As you can see from the circle, I am the engagement coordinator. And we have everyone else here, Sean Miller, who is our Northeast Regional Director. This is a person that I directly report to. And then we also have Ashley Huerta, who is the policy coordinator and does a lot of the policy work that we do here at our YI office. And then Alejandra Martinez, who is our COVID-19 outreach specialist. So we did um, get a grant from the CDC to do COVID outreach work. And she's specifically handling that, doing tabling, doing events all throughout the city and also all throughout the state. And as for me, so I'm the engagement coordinator, as I mentioned before, and I actually handle our Young Advocates program, which I'll talk a little bit more about a bit later, but basically how I got into my role. So it was actually through the Young Advocates program that I was able to be in my role today. So in spring 2020 was when the first time that we actually had the Young Advocates program here um, in the YI New York office. And so we had a group of, I believe it was 12 folks, including myself, um, to do training on policy advocacy. We also had Advocacy Day where we got to go to Albany in person. Of course, this was before COVID, um, before COVID happened and um, just ever since then, I've been a part of YI in various capacities, but um, I think it's important for me to talk about just like my journey. So even before YI, I actually, it, I actually am a CUNY alum. I actually graduated from John Jay College of Criminal Justice back in spring 2020. So right when the pandemic hit. Um, um, and yeah, so I definitely... I can definitely attest to how um, difficult it was transitioning, oh, transitioning um, from, you know, going in person and then going online and everything that was happening during the pandemic. Um, and yeah, so even before then, like throughout my John Jay career journey, I've actually been a part of various nonprofits. So in my first internship ever, I've actually been a nonprofit for victims of domestic violence. So I actually worked with victims who were victims of the domestic violence. And I also worked with another organization, another youth organization um, back where I'm from, which is Washington Heights. Um, that's where I grew up. I'm currently in Brooklyn now, um, ever since I moved. Um, but ever since then, I've just been a part of nonprofit and I've even traveled the world um, through my fellowship. And I can talk a little bit about that if y'all have questions towards the end. Uh, but I was actually able to travel um, first. I was able to travel to Los Angeles um, and I did an internship there working with youth who are currently incarcerated um, and doing 
poetry workshops with them, spoken word workshops with them. And then I was also able to travel all the way to Denmark. Um, I don't know if folks know where Denmark is. It's all the way in Europe, kind of where the Sweden area, Norway area is. Um, and I was an intern there. And I was looking at cases where artistic violations um, were happening all around the world. Um, I don't know if folks know, but just briefly. So US, the USA has a lot of freedom when it comes to artistic expression, but other, you know, other areas of the world aren't, don't have that same freedom and privilege. So it's really interesting for me to get to see the artistic violations and how other countries unfortunately handle um, what they consider artistic violations just throughout the um, just throughout the world. So um, there's that, and I've done some work around the criminal justice um, arena, the intersections between arts and criminal justice. So that's all to say that I've done a lot um, within my within my um, you know journey through John Jay. So uh, if you have any questions about that, feel free to ask. But in terms of just my role, as I said, I run our engagement programs, which I'll which I'll talk a little bit more about um, in the upcoming slides. So I just wanted to give y'all a brief overview of who is YI and who is Young Invincibles. So as you probably read in our description, we're a national organization, nonprofit organization that is committed to elevating the young adult voices in the political process and expanding economic opportunity for ages 18 to 34. And we work on various key issue areas. So as you see here to my right, there are different issues that we work on here at YI as a whole. So we work on healthcare, we work on higher education, we will work on workforce development, and also civic engagement. So I will note that civic engagement is in what we do all throughout YI and also through the New York office. Um, we do, since we are a national nonprofit, we actually have different regions all across the country. So we have California, we have Colorado, we also have Illinois, Texas, um, and our main headquarters is in DC. So I will just mention that. And then of course, YI New York is just one of the many regions that we have that I mentioned previously. Um, but I will note that here in the YI New York office, we, we focus heavily on higher education issues. So that could be ranging from basic needs, right? Food insecurity, housing insecurity, folks who are students who are homeless, um, students who don't don't have access to food or even healthy food. We also focus on mental health. I know mental health is a huge issue that folks are um, really looking into and there's a lot of um, awareness about it. And that's also something that we focus on, like not enough mental health counselors, especially at CUNY, there's definitely not enough mental health counselors. And I know currently the range for like one counselor to students is like one counselor to about 2,100 um, students, which obviously is egregious and it, we need to lower that ratio. So I'll talk a little bit more about that. And then the last one that I'll just talk about briefly is college access and affordability. Um, I don't know if folks have had, you know, a lot of, there's the various barriers when it comes to college access and being able to afford college, obviously with the rising cost of tuition, especially at CUNY, um, it hasn't been easy for folks to enroll in college just because, you know, a lot of us come from low income backgrounds, don't have the money, most of us had to pay throughout our way through college, that was definitely me. Um, but our college access and affordability um, campaigns have been mainly around transfer students, so students who transfer from two-year colleges, community colleges here, just like here, Kingsborough Community College. And if you wanna to transfer to a four-year, there's a lot of barriers when it comes to trying to transfer from a two-year to a four-year college. Um, so those are some of the issues that we focus on here in higher education. And then briefly, in terms of healthcare, um, we don't focus heavily on healthcare here in the New York office, but if you wanna learn a little bit more, obviously our COVID-19 um, outreach, that's definitely one. So getting young people to understand like COVID, um, symptoms of COVID, also knowing about the vaccine and why it's important to get the uh, COVID-19 vaccine. And then the last one I'll talk about is making sure that everyone has access to, you know, healthcare. So that includes undocumented immigrants, immigrants in general, uh, whatever background that you come from, you should be able to have access to um, healthcare and not have to accrue debt from, you know, going to a hospital or what have you. So those are briefly some of the issues and we don't really work on workforce development as much, but that's something that's more to come. So briefly, how does YI create change? 
So we do a lot of policy advocacy research, we'll talk a little bit more about. The next one is strategic communications. Um, how do we strategize in terms of communicating some of the issues that young people are currently facing? And then the last one is youth engagement, which I focus heavily on in my role. So talking about engagement. So we have our Young Advocates Program that I mentioned. So it is a paid leadership development program in policy advocacy. And throughout the program, you have the opportunity to build campaigns around some of the main issue areas that I just mentioned. So it could be basic needs. It could be um, mental health. It could be um, the last one is college access and affordability. So if you're a transfer student, then that would be something that you um, could do a campaign around. And the last thing um, in terms of our Young Advocates program is making sure that we amplify and elevate youth voice. So there are different ways that we do that. And that could also be through the other thing, which is our strategic communications, which again, I'll talk a little bit more about. So we actually had the ambassadors program is no longer running, but these are basically alumni of our program from our Young Advocates program. They can be ambassadors and they support a lot of um, our basic needs work when it comes to the campaigns, when it comes to some of the advocacy work that the young advocates are currently doing. And again, they do a lot of grassroots organizing. So talking to you know students such as yourselves or even student leaders, and even going as far as talking to administration at CUNY or at their campus or even elected officials. And then student-led policy advocacy. So we have legislative advocacy and elevating youth voice. So again, I'll talk a little bit more about this in the last slide that we have, but we have had in the past couple of years is Students Take Albany Advocacy Day, where you get to talk to legislators for this one day and talk about the issues that you're currently facing as a college student or as a student in general, and just talk to elected officials and um, elevate some of the issues that you're currently facing or your peers are facing. Um, and the last thing that we have here is the State of Young New York and Step Up New York Advocacy Summits. So here, um, through the Young Advocates Program, as I mentioned, the advocates will need to have campaigns and they get to build their campaigns from the ground up in some of the issue areas that I mentioned. And State of Young New York and Step Up New York is basically a way that advocates can showcase their work and showcase their campaign and some of the things that they've done and how they were able to address certain issues that they were focusing on. And then the last thing here is student testimonies at city and state hearings. So part of the Young Advocates Program, advocates have the ability to testify whenever there are hearings on the city and state level. So you can talk to your city council members and directly testify. Testimonies are usually three minutes max. Um, and usually they have a, a topic that you can talk about. So that could be like mental health or even um, I remember the last testimony that I was able to be at was um, for CUNY Service Corps and CUNY Cultural Corps. I don't know if folks know about those programs, but it's basically on like professional development, um, getting internships that you're interested in and just exploring your horizon. So I was able to testify at that and have some advocates testify as well who've been a part of the CUNY Service Corps or the CUNY Cultural Corps. And then student-led policy advocacy continued. So we've done a lot of grassroots advocacy, which is our basic needs pledge that we have all across CUNY campuses. So this is a pledge um, to make sure that college students, students in New York and New York City and New York State have access to not only food, but also housing and just basic necessities in general. And so our advocates were able to come up with this pledge um, where folks can get involved. And again, I can put this all in like a huge email and also in the chat. And if you have any questions about it, I can talk a little bit more. But this is a pledge that they've created along with some of our staff here at YI um, to make sure that, again, students' basic needs are being met and there are ways that students can get involved, whether that's talking to a campus leader, maybe talking to student government, for example. I don't know if folks um, have ever been a part of SGA, Student Government Association, um, at their colleges, but that's one way that you can raise awareness about the issues when it comes to like homelessness, when it comes to not having access to food or um, even, even like not having access to mental health counselors. Um, these are some of the things that you can take action steps on. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. And then student-led consumer education. So you see on the right-hand side, so the first, picture that you see is actually our 
um, website that advocates have created. So this was created in the summer of 2021 when I was first, first on board full time. And we had advocates and interns come together to create this resource website. So it could be on mental health. So there's a resource guide on how to access mental health at all the CUNY campuses. Um, there's also a food resource guide uh, on how to access, like where can you access like food resources, a food pantry on your college campus. So there's a resource guide there, as you can see on the bottom. And there's also an extensive resource guide at the bottom on in terms of your zip code, your district, your borough. Um, so that's a lot more extensive, but we have resources there that advocates have been able to create. And so when I say consumer education, it means raising awareness about certain, some of the resources and some of the issues that um, college students are facing. Um, and yeah, and we've also had um, partnerships with different organizations. Um, I can talk a little bit more about that. So we've had partnerships with Healthy CUNY. I don't know if folks have ever heard about them, but they do a lot of um, kind of some similar work that we do here at YI, but they're more research focused. Um, and they're more, um, you know, focused on getting out reports when it comes to, let's say, like, I know the last um, report that they were able to um, come out with was surviving and thriving a healthy CUNY um, that listed resources for mental health, but also um, they had a survey out, um, I believe in 2020 when the pandemic first hit to see how college students, CUNY students in particular were doing um, in terms of their mental health, but also what are some of the factors that impacted their mental health. So that's one of the partnerships that we have. And then the next one I'll talk about is, um, is Swipe Out Hunger. So we are currently working with them on legislation um, to make sure that students' basic needs are being met. Um, and that could be access to SNAP. So having college students enroll in SNAP, um, make sh making sure that they know that resources are there, um, not just food pantries, but you know maybe having government as assistance, for example. So that could be SNAP, um, maybe even housing assistance, um, things of that nature. So this is just some of the work that our advocates have been able to do. Um, and I've been very grateful to be a part of and kind of lead and steer the way um, for them to create these content. And then the last, um, the other thing here is storytelling. So we're huge here at the YI office when it comes to elevating youth voice. That's literally in our mission. Um, and storytelling is one of them. So as you can see here, we have on the right hand side, this is like one of the advocates that I was able to be a part of um, in his cohort. So we were actually in the same cohort together and he talks about, you know, just how the pandemic has affected him and how the pandemic has affected him in terms of like, you know, not having access to food or, you know, being afraid of losing their housing. Um, so that's a blog post that he was able to create. And then there's also videos that we've compiled, which again, I can send all those links later on. And then capturing sto stories, social media content. So sometimes um, we have a storytelling project, as you can see in the up, on the up there, like um, up where the blog post is. Um, and sometimes we can collect stories. So that could be like you could talk about your experiences around, you know, housing or your experiences around not having enough access to food or even healthy food options or. Um, not having access to a counselor. So these are some of the, you know, things that you can write about and you can tell your story about. And we also have social media. So sometimes we would do like social media graphics um, and take quotes from advocates or young people on some of the issues that we want to highlight. And then strategic communication. So I will say, uh, if y'all are wondering, that's actually me on the right hand side. Um, so I actually, I'm very grateful. I had the opportunity to be um, on ABC News, uh, World News. Um, I was approached um, by our YI staff to talk about my experience with mental health. Um, so obviously I'm comfortable talking about it, so I don't really need to, you know, it's already out in the world. Um, so I was able to talk about my experience when it comes to mental health and being hospitalized and being afraid that um, I wouldn't be able to pay out the debt that I would have accrued um, being in the hospital for almost a week. Um, so I talked about that on ABC News and they had a whole article um, posted out as well. And it was aired, um, I believe this was in the fall 2020 semester. 
And then we've also had different um, like outlets, news outlets. So Gotham Gazette is a huge news outlet. I don't know if y'all heard of them, but they're pretty much legitimate news outlet to talk about politics and things that are going around in the city. Some policies are um, might affect all New Yorkers. So we've been published at the Gotham Gazette talking about mental health services and not having enough mental health counselors, especially at the CUNY. Um, at the CUNY level. And then we've also been published at Huffington Post. So actually the last person that you saw in the last slide, um, he actually did not have access to a laptop or a computer. So he was talking about his experience, um, you know, going from this, going from in-person to online learning and the fact that he didn't have a computer or laptop. And actually through this, and this is what I'm telling you, it's really important for us to share our stories. Actually, through this um, news outlet, he was able to get a laptop. Um, as people saw that, like, he was not able to get access to a laptop because of, for whatever reason, not having enough money to buy one or he couldn't access it at his campus. So someone was able to lend, lend him an actual laptop um, as a result of this news story going out. So these are just some of the highlights that we've had here in the New York office um, when it comes to young adult stories um, like myself and other advocates. And then I'll talk a little bit about our policy agenda because I feel like it's important to talk about what is our focus is, at least for this upcoming year. So some of our city and state basic needs priorities is reinvest in CUNY No Student Go Hungry initiative. So back when Governor Cuomo was um, a part of you know, he was in his position, they did have um, an initiative to make sure that all CUNY campuses had um, food pantries. Um, and ever since then, um, I believe it was in 2018 or 2019, um, it hasn't been, this initiative hasn't been reinvested. So we definitely need more money to make sure that food pantries are still running because it does cost a lot. So we definitely need more re reinvestment. And then the other thing that you see here is implementing SNAP outreach and communications, um, communications campaigns with student navigators at CUNY and SUNY. So as I mentioned before, college students are eligible for SNAP. And one of the initiatives that we have planned in place along with Healthy CUNY and Swipe Out Hunger is to make sure that students, one, are aware that they can apply for SNAP and they are eligible for SNAP, and two, um, help them through the process. So Healthy CUNY has food security advocates to help, um, to help students like yourselves, like myself, when I was a student, to um, apply for SNAP. And also, in addition to that, um, not only Healthy CUNY, but Swipe Out Hunger also has navigators to help um, students directly to, you know, if they have any questions in terms of SNAP el eligibility, or they have any questions in terms of applying um, through the process for SNAP, they also have their navigators for that as well. And then the really key here, uh, key um, piece of legislation is create homeless liaisons at CUNY and SUNY. So as y'all probably already know, or maybe y'all, some of y'all have had experience, but I certainly met with students who have been homeless, um, especially during my journey at John Jay. Um, and there isn't much support for homeless students. And so we created a piece of legislation, which is not, is not something that we reinvented. It's actually something that um, has been implemented in other states like Maine or California. So those states have implemented these homeless liaisons to make sure that students who are experiencing homelessness on college campus, that they have a direct point of contact to make sure that they have the resources that they need. So whether that's, you know, whether that's like going to single stop, right, and having access to SNAP or having access to food or even um, applying for housing assistance. So it would be really great if we could have these homeless liaisons on CUNY campuses and also SUNY campuses because um, here at YI, we don't just focus on New York City, we also focus on the state. And so we wanna make sure that we're including everybody. Um, and SUNY students, of course, you know, have a high risk as well of being homeless. And there are stu SUNY students who are homeless. So just being mindful of that. And um, so this is a piece of legislation that currently we are trying to introduce. Um, it's not currently in the legislature as of yet, but this is something that in our advocacy day, we are definitely pushing for. And then the last one here is require basic needs data collection. So we have all these initiatives here at CUNY, 
at SUNY. So like the No Student Go Hungry initiative, we have food pantries, we have single stop at community colleges, but we don't really know how effective these resources are. So here at YI, we are pushing that CUNY and SUNY um, are able to have this data collection where they can see that these resources are actually helping students and these resources are effective, right? And also, if there's any improvements that need to be made, then we can look at the data and be able to see, okay, like this is, maybe this isn't working out so well and how can we improve our services? How can we improve our resources that we're offering to college students? And then the next, um, some of our other policy agenda items are mental health services. So as I mentioned before, it's egregious that we only have the current average of, at CUNY at least, for one counselor is every one counselor to about 2,100 um, college students. Obviously that's not enough. Um, and that's a lot that counselors are bearing the burden of. Um, and we need to expand. We need to expand the number of mental health counselors. So we need more mental health counselors on campus. So that's something that we are definitely pushing for, um, whether that could be a remote option or even an in-person option. I know CUNY currently has like 70% in-person and 30% online. So making sure that we not only just have enough counselors, but it's accessible to all students. And then digital equity and access. So that's another issue that we're currently focused on is making sure that students have access to technology and internet. So obviously that may not apply as much now given that CUNY is 70% in-person and 30% online, but still for folks who may not be comfortable going on um, in person and wanna be online, we need to make sure that they have um, adequate internet and the technology to be able to do work online. And then um, the next one here under this um, issue area is making sure that students who are living in homeless shelters can have access to technology. So I know, I believe that some of my um, peers have experienced um, living in a shelter, especially during the pandemic. And I, I was told that there are certain restrictions and limitations when it comes to accessing technology while you're in a shelter. So we wanna make sure that students have access to technology and also internet so that they're able to tune in online or if they're working online, they can also do that because it's really important for them to make sure that they're getting an education, but also making sure that they are um, surviving and staying afloat because Folks, I know that um, we've had in person and things are opening back up now, but there are still a lot of folks who are still doing work online like myself. And then the last thing here is college affordability, the new deal for CUNY. This is a huge piece of legislation. Um, I don't know if folks have um, ever heard about this, but I know at the PSC, the Professional Staff Congress of CUNY, uh, which I work closely with, um, and other student-led organizations at CUNY, um, we all work on this piece of legislation called the New Deal that ensures that CUNY, at least undergraduate tuition, is free. Um, I don't know if folks know about the history of CUNY, but just really briefly, CUNY was free. Um, and unfortunately, um, after enrollment was open to folks like ourselves, people of color, um, CUNY started tar charging tuition and so we want that back right we want to make sure that CUNY is free again but also making sure that CUNY has the resources that it needs so the new deal for CUNY if it is passed it will make undergrad tuition free and on top of that we'll have more mental health counselors we'll also have more resources for food access for housing access even maybe more uh, resources for social workers for example also expanding childcare, because I know there, there are student parents and they, students have, there are students who, you know, take care of a child or have, um, you know, child caring responsibilities or what have you. So making sure that we have um, those resources in place for them as well. And the last thing that I'll mention when it comes to the New Deal for CUNY is making sure that the infrastructure at different CUNY campuses are up to date. Um, I don't know if you've heard, but at some CUNY campuses, there are like walls that are like really crumbling, like literally crumbling. And we need to make sure that that's not happening because that can also pose a health hazard. Um, there are also, for example, at some CUNY campuses that they don't have their elevators working. And um, for students who are physically disabled or who identify as disabled, may, may not have access and can't go up, you know, a flight of stairs, um, versus a able-bodied person. So 
making sure that all of these are put in place um, for CUNY to be accessible um, to everybody, um, no matter what background you come from. And then really briefly, I'll just talk about some of the wins that we've had here at the YI office. So of March 2020, we actually worked with council to the city council here in the city to convert cafeteria vouchers to cash during COVID-19. So of course, this is right when the pandemic hit. I don't know if y'all know or have had access to any like cafeteria vouchers, but it just didn't make any sense for students who had cafeteria vouchers um, to use that during the pandemic when campuses were closed. So there was no way that students could use their cafeteria vouchers and get access to food when campuses were closed. So we made the push to make sure that those vouchers were converted to cash so that students can gain access to food maybe around their community um, and don't, didn't have to worry that they don't have enough food or adequate food um, for that day. So we made sure that cafeteria vouchers were accessible and put into cash so that folks didn't have to worry like, oh, okay, campus is closed, like how can I access food? And then the other three here, in April, 2020, we were able to expand SNAP to students who were enrolled in CTE. So CTE programs are career technical education programs. So maybe if you wanna be, for example, an electrician, um, students previously who were enrolled in those programs couldn't have access to SNAP. Um, I don't know why that was, but that was a policy that was implemented. So unless you were a college student and met all these criteria, if you were part of the CTE programs, you, you couldn't access SNAP um, for whatever reason. Um, that was just the policy. So in April 2020, we were able to expand that. So students who are part of career technical education programs are able to apply for SNAP and eligible for SNAP. Oh, this is a huge one. So in June 2020, I don't know if y'all heard, but there was a huge push. Um, there was a huge pushback when Mayor de Blasio wanted to cut funding for the ASAP program. Um, the ASAP program is crucial, crucial for a lot of students and maybe some of y'all aren't in ASAP, I don't know, but um, it's crucial for students who you know, need access to textbooks, um, transportation, um, for example, and ASAP helped with those things, right? Uh, ASAP helped helped with non-tuition related costs. Um, and so we were able to restore funding to ASAP and also restore funding for the CUNY Food and Security Pilot Program to make sure that students have access to food, um, especially during the, the very beginning of the pandemic. And then the next one is in October, 2020, CUNY had invested in the CARES Act to make sure that there was mental health investments. Um, so there was a $5 million, I believe, investment in CUNY in the fall 2020, October 2020, to make sure that we expanded mental health resources and services to students, um, especially since things were still online and we weren't back in person at the time. And then the last thing in terms of 2021 policy wins. So we were able to expand SNAP eligibility for college students. So students such as yourselves have access to SNAP. Um, we were also able to increase max TAP awards. So previously, um, TAP has been an issue for a lot of students when it comes to not having enough tuition assistance. Um, so we were able to increase that tuition assistance to $500. We were also, again, able to increase funding and restore funding to oppor opportunity programs such as ASAP. Um, over the course of the couple years, we also were able to freeze tuition at CUNY and SUNY. So stop freezing, um, so stop tuition increase from increasing at SUNY and CUNY. And also we were able to create a movement. So this is not yet, but create a movement to make sure that they are there are resource centers across CUNY and SUNY campuses, because we know basic needs is not just for food insecurity, but also housing. And there's a whole a lot of factors when it comes to the basic needs and well-being of students. So making sure that resource centers such as Single Stop, I am a proud person who's used Single Stop at John Jay. So I know the value of programs like Single Stop. So making sure that we have similar programs like Single Stop all across CUNY, not just the community colleges, but also for four-year colleges and senior colleges as well. And then um, the last couple of things here that are related to transcript withholding. So um, I have a personal experience with transcript withholding. So basically, if you owe money to the school or the college, whether that could be library fees or you owe still tuition to the college, 
um, you won't be able to have access to your transcript. And so that's something that I've experienced. And a huge win that we were able to have was when Governor Hochul, this past January, when she announced her state of the state address, she was able to talk about banning transcript withholding all across New York City and New York State. So CUNY and SUNY have, have suspended their practices of transcript withholding. So that means that the thousands of students who are not able to have access to their transcript, because you need your transcript not only to apply to grad school, but also you need your transcript to apply for jobs because that is proof that you actually um, graduated from college. Um, so the, the thousands of people are able to now have access to their transcript and their official transcript for whatever you know, whatever endeavors that they're trying to achieve. So whether that's grad school or going to a program um, or even applying for a job, they don't have that issue because CUNY and SUNY had suspended transfer withholding. And the last thing here, I know I spoke a lot, so make sure to like digest all the information that I've been able to give y'all. And there's a lot of things that we've done in the New York office. So I apologies, that's a, a lot of information. But I know some of y'all are wondering, well, how can I get involved? Like, how can I, you know, be a part of this movement to make sure that CUNY, um, CUNY in particular, is making sure that students' basic needs are being met? Well, this is your chance. So Advocacy Day will be coming up for us on Friday, March 25th, um, and it will be on Zoom. So unfortunately, you see on the picture right hand side, this is bittersweet for me, um, only because on the right hand side, I'm actually in the middle, um, holding up the YI sign, but this was before the pandemic hit. I believe this was like a month before the pandemic had hit. Um, we were all able to go to Albany and talk with legislators. So unfortunately we can't do that now, just given everything. I know things are still opening back up, but we still are taking precautions here at the organization at the YI office. So this will be online. Um, and I want to invite y'all to be able to talk with legislators, talk with elected officials. I know probably some of y'all are thinking like, whoa, I've probably never spoken to an elected official. How do I speak to them? No worries. I've been there. I've done that. Trust me, it can be nerve wracking at first, but it's really not. Just because if you think about it, elected officials are representing us. So if they're not doing their job, if they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing in terms of helping the community, helping, you know, schools within their district. I mean, that just kind of means that we're not going to vote for them anymore. So just think of it as talking to another person who's supposed to represent you and supposed to do their job when it comes to giving the resources that we need um, as college students, but also as constituents. So with that being said, I... I'm going to stop talking now because that was a lot, but Advocacy Day is definitely coming up on Friday. It will be starting around 1130 and will end, I believe, around 330 to, to 4. So we will have free training. So don't worry about like, oh, I'm, I'm scared to talk to elected official. We will have free training at the very beginning to go over talking points, to go over, you know, scenarios and how to navigate certain situations when it comes to talking to an elected official. That's something that you've never done before. So that's pretty much my spiel. I know that was a lot um, of talking. I know I threw a lot of information at y'all, but if you have any questions, I will be here and my email is also up here, but I can also put all the links that I mentioned in the chat so y'all can take a look. So with that being said, does anyone have any questions? And you can feel free to like put in the chat or feel free to unmute. Thank you so much, Lisa. So anyone who has a question, I think you can unmute yourself and then come in and ask. Okay, so can I start please? Sure. So first of all, thank you very much. Lisa. Um, I really appreciate it. And I'm so grateful to like have this opportunity. So, and um, what you're doing, I'm sure it motivates a lot of people. <laughs> and so, because one of the main problems nowadays is that students have a lot of problems. I mean, like they can't even afford to buy books or laptops, as you mentioned, and any other supplies that, that you mentioned earlier. So, and um, I don't know, I, I, I can say that 
you and others who are involved to are changing the lives of these people. And yeah, so I, I, first of all, I know I think personally me, I really appreciated your jobs and about my questions. So I think like all of this needs a greatest, greatest motivation. So and how did you manage to do all this at this age? Because like you were very young and so you had a lot of experience. So how, how did you do that? really really wonder <laughs> yeah no thank you for the question um I'm gonna be real honest because I'm the type of person who likes to be honest um you know you learn as you go right mm -hmm. I if I were to tell you like like if you were to ask me like two years or three years from like before like, hey, are you going to be a part of the Young Advocates Program? Are you going to be the mm -hmm. engagement coordinator here at YI? I would have looked at you funny um, mm -hmm. because this is something that was very new to me. When I first came to be a okay. part of the Young Advocates Program, I've never done policy work. I've never done macro level scale work that was going to impact millions of people because mm -hmm. the types of internships and careers that I've been a part of have been mostly direct service work. I've worked with other students, maybe that's like for a career, like helping them, you know, find an internship or even mentoring students. And um, to be honest, like I learned as I went, right? Taking all the information that I was able to learn and gather through the Young Advocates Program and stepping outside of my comfort zone um, mm -hmm. are key because sometimes you just have to, you have to come you outside of your to, comfort right? zone and come oh, outside of your shell yeah and come out yeah, of your oh, shell it's very really good answer thank you very very much and also it was so good advice so i don't know where i say it a lot but i'm you know i mean like now you're my ideal i think so thank you very very much <laughs> yeah of course and thank you um for being here and again like this is just one step right yeah. um i took the step of being a part of the young advocates program and being able to speak my mind and speak my speak to my experiences right even though it was nerve-wracking for me but being able to take that risk and take that step is so crucial right not only for your professional growth but also for your personal growth and again like a lot of nonprofit work is learning as you go um, but also making sure that you're taking in all the opportunities to not only, you know, get the knowledge, but also network with people, because that's also how you learn, right? Yes, when yeah, it comes exactly. to organizing, when it comes to advocacy work, you learn from other people. And mm -hmm. I really strive at YI and throughout my life to create a community where people feel empowered and people, mm -hmm. especially young people who, you know, we've, we are constantly told that, we can't do this or we don't have enough life experience or like we're not old enough to understand. No, we understand. We've been through these experiences. We've been through like basic needs issues, right? Housing, like homelessness, right. Um, not having enough access to food, water, like, you know, not having a stable home or like not having job a job, right? Especially when the pandemic first hit and the pandemic is still affecting millions of people. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> Yeah. I know like I know that wasn't um, a straightforward answer like a step-by-step -step, like how did I become an advocate or how did I no, it's, it's so thing? clear I mean like thank you very much I really understand your point thank you yeah. very much yeah <laughs> thank you and I hope that's clear to everyone too I mean um, I appreciate you saying that I'm your idol but you can just be me right and just yourself right you can be in my shoes it doesn't it, it doesn't take like, how do I say this? Um, it, it doesn't take a miracle for you to be in my position, right? And mm -hmm. to be a, a community right. organizer or a community activist um, or an advocate, like it doesn't take a miracle. It just takes not only the work, but being able to step outside of like, you know, what you're comfortable with and yeah, learn exactly. something new <laughs> and be open. So yeah, I will, I will try for sure. I'm, I'm just still working on it like every single day. So hopefully I will in the near future too. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah of course. Um, and thank you. Thank you for um, that question. I think I'm it's sure. <laughs> so I don't know if folks have any other questions for me, maybe like in terms of what to expect. It could be anything. There's no such thing as a stupid question.
you can just unmute and uh, okay there's uh, from karen Reynold. yeah if you want to unmute or if you want to yeah yeah the link will be set i'll have all the links and i'll send it to midori so she can put it on the website and also send it to attendees yeah, this talk is going to be, it, it's recorded and it will be on our homeless New York City website. Okay, thank you, Karen. Okay, there's also a comment that it is so empowering. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Vina. <laughs> I appreciate it. I don't know if folks have, we can give a couple more minutes. Okay, there's something Karen says for the Zoom meeting with the electors. Yeah, so Midori will send you over the Google form because you have to fill out the Google form. And then from there, um, we'll also determine who's your representative so that you're able to talk with your rep. Um, because representatives and elected officials, I will say, will mainly listen to you if you're a constituent. So if you fall within their district. So she'll send over all the information and also we'll have flyers. So if you wanna send it out to different folks, um, maybe your friends who are interested in getting involved in policy advocacy and just don't know how, this is a perfect opportunity for y'all to get involved um, and talk with elected officials. Honestly, it's not that scary. It's scary at first, but I promise you, We'll take care of you when it comes to all of that. Yeah, bye, have a great day. I don't know if folks have any more questions. We can still be here um, if anything, but if not, I guess Midori, if you wanna yeah. wrap up. Yeah, thank you so much everyone for coming and this is going to be also on the website so if some people who came in a little late, you can catch up the earlier portion of the talk. And I hope you will all consider um, in getting involved in Young Invincibles and uh, make some difference for our uh, lives uh, at CUNY and SUNY. And thank you so much, Lisa, for coming to introduce Young Invincibles. It's just so empowering that how much you can accomplish and you know you can change by uh, getting involved in this kind of uh, movement. So thank you so much. So everyone, maybe you can do uh, reactions for um, like or... <laughs> Maybe emojis. I mean, how do you oh, feel yeah. after this presentation? Oh, I see a celebration emoji. What about <laughs> other folks? <laughs> and a heart emoji. I see a clap emoji. I see a heart emoji. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, I hope I was able to help in any way, inspire in any way. I really want to make sure that y'all know that young people have the power and I really want to make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm always available. I'm always here for folks. Um, if y'all want to connect, I put my email in the chat. So if you just want to talk and chat and see how you can get involved or there's any other organizations that you want to connect with, I'm definitely here. As I said, I've been in a lot of nonprofits, um, ranging from criminal justice to the arts. So if there's any connections that I can help you with, just let me know. Um, even if, you know, you don't become a part of YI, ideally, I would love for y'all to become a part of YI, but if not, um, if YI is not something that you're interested in when it comes to the issue areas that we focus on, definitely hit me up with any like questions or if you wanna connect with anything else. I'm always here. Okay, thank you so much. So the information about the uh, YI is going to be on our website. So thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much. Thank you. And have a great rest of your day.